excited about that. Are y'all ready to hear a word from the Lord? Man, I boy, every time more and more I study this, and more and more I get this revelation about being in the kingdom, the more excited I get, and the more excited I get for you. Because I realize that if you get this in your spirit and you apply it to your life, man, your life will never be the same. So let's pray. Father God, we come once again to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to deliver word to these, your people. We know, God, they didn't come by chance or by accident, but they came to hear word directly from the throne. So I declare, Lord God, that you decrease me and increase you. I pray that this word go forth with power and might, clarity and understanding. I pray, Father God, that this shall fall not on the ears that would just be hearers of it, but that will be doers of this word, apply to their life and change their life. Say, we serve notice on you right now. We tell you that you need to be horrified because God is about to be glorified in this place in Jesus' name. And every believer shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, we are continuing this series on there's a king in you. And this is actually part two. So you want to make sure that you pick up. We'll have soon for you uh, the first four teachings that we did on revelation of who you are. We're putting together a series and putting it all packed it up real nice. And then we're going to have those for you. So you want to get those when those become available. And then when we finish up this series on There's a King in You, you want to get this information too so you can keep keep listening to it and keep listening to it. Because how many times, how many know that as soon as you walk out of here, matter of fact, while some of y'all in here, Satan going to come and try to steal the word. Amen. Especially a word that identifies with who you are. Whenever there's a word that goes forth, they begin to expose myths of who you think you are and begin to reveal actually who you are. Satan is not excited about that because he knows if you figure out who you really are, who you are, and that you are a king, then you begin to open your mouth and start declaring some things. And he knows if you start declaring some things, then you're gonna put a you're gonna put a hold in Satan's rule and in his dominion over your life. Once you start speaking some stuff, once you start opening your mouth and telling him, get up off of me. Right. See, understand in the word of God, when Satan came, and this one needed this one this one needed my notes, so somebody need to hear this. In the word of God, when Satan came to tempt Jesus, Jesus didn't go in the corner and cry. He didn't call over here and say, oh my God, leave me alone. Why are you bothering me? No, no, no. The word says that Jesus said to Satan, it is written. So three times Satan came to Jesus and tried to tempt him with all kind of stuff. And the first thing he did was come to Jesus against his identity. He said, if you be the son of man. What do you mean, if I be? And that's the first thing he does to you. What, you, you think you a king? You ain't no king. Look where you live. You need to tell him, go back to hell where he come from. I am a king. The word says I am a king. But you have to respond to Satan with the word. You, Satan doesn't care if you crawl in a corner like a little kid and start crying. As a matter of fact, he glad you cried. Because when you cry, you can't open your mouth and speak the word. Jesus didn't cry. Jesus said, it is written. It is written. It is written. And on the third time, he said, it is written. And then he told him to leave him. See, that's how you got to deal with Satan. You can't deal with Satan by whining and crying, complaining and moaning. You have to give him the word. Watch this. You have to feed the word in his throat because he knows it. Remember, he used to be an angel. He knows the word of God. All he does is tempt you to see if you know it, Sean. See, he knows it. And it comes at all of us the same way. So what you have to do is you got to start realizing who you are, who you are, where you come from, what's your covenant, what's your inheritance. And then you're going to have to learn how to open your mouth and say to say, I'm all that. I am all that. It don't matter what my situation is. It doesn't matter right now if I'm in a drug rehab program. I'm still a king. I'm still all that. Despite of my situation, despite of my troubles, despite of what I go through, despite of this thorn that's in my flesh, I'm still all that. Hallelujah. Amen. And you gotta get you gotta get this like this 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 nasty attitude about it. Because yes. once you get this nasty attitude about it, and then Satan will begin to think twice about tempting you. Oh, he is gonna come, but then he's gonna come with a different mindset because he says, now wait a minute, I just I just tried to issue some sickness on them and they rebuked me, so I gotta come a different way. You wanna make him tremble. You want Satan to think twice. You want Satan to have to call a meeting with all his demons before he even approach you because they need to figure out how to approach you because he knows that you're bad. You know, there's rankings. There are 
are rankings demons. There are demons in ranking. You, at this point in your life, you should not have no little small rank, no good, little peace sergeant demon coming up against you. Some small peace sergeant demon comes against you. You ought to be able to, through your word, just put them down in their place. You ought to be so strong that Satan got to send a general demon at you. He got to send a whole platoon at you. He got to send a whole army at you. And when they get there, you still got to be able to say, it is written. that we are going to win. 